And for this story, let's take a look at energy dependency. An energy executive warned that ASEAN's dependency on energy sources outside the region will make it more vulnerable to disturbances in the energy supply. Pailin Chucho Tawan, president and CEO of Thailand's PTT public com company Co Limited, said most ASEAN countries are net oil importers, with eight out of the ten countries depending on crude imports. ASEAN's economic growth still performs greater than many other countries in the world. Unfortunately, that growth is mainly a result of the region's very high energy consumption, he said in his presentation on the region's oil and gas outlook at the 29th ASEAN Ministers on Energy meeting. He highlighted the dependence of most ASEAN countries on oil import and forecasted about 315,000 kilotons of oil equivalent by 2030. He said energy consumption in the region will double within 15 to 20 years despite the limited reserve. He also noted ASEAN's oil production will keep decreasing towards 2030. The energy executive urged ASEAN countries to improve its energy efficiency in order to valuable, use valuable resources wisely. He pressed member countries to promote renewable energy such as biofuel, solar, wind power and geothermal. Improving energy efficiency is the best way to ensure energy security, limit greenhouse gas emissions, and insulate economies from the volatility of energy prices, he added. Thailand's imports rose sharply in August, marked by a high oil bill, which jumped 77.5 percent year on year, and restocking as well as fading supply disruption. Oil imports alone account for 21 percent of the country's total imports. For non-oil imports, some of which have gained from the fading supply disruption, also helped boost the August imports. According to a Citibank report, non-oil imports soared by 37 percent year-on-year after growth of 5.1 percent year-on-year in the election month of July. Inventory restocking, coupled with high gold prices, which probably elevated imports of precious stones and gems, gold, silver, also lifted raw material imports by 41.2 percent year-on-year in August. Electrical parts up 10.4 percent, chemicals up 34.7 percent, iron and steel up 40.8 percent, and basic metals 27.8 percent posted upbeat gains suggesting restocking. Sustained diesel price subsidies amid easing oil prices and rising local motor vehicle sales up 35 percent bolstered energy demand, which then bloated the oil import bill. Imports of vehicles and parts grew 11.8 percent, were driven by a 63 percent gain in imports of passenger cars and trucks. Imports of computers and parts for export assembly grew 16.7 percent. The over 40 percent import growth in August may be a one-off as supply constraints ease. Imports in the following months may show more sober estimates, a better gauge of underlying import demand consistent with the export backdrop and domestic demand setting. Meanwhile, Thailand also reported better than expected export growth of 31.1 percent year-on-year, driven by a 64.3 percent jump in agricultural exports and complemented by a 16.3 percent gain in shipments of manufactured non-food goods. Could we now, could we now over the two months, mm -hmm. floods have devastated over half of the 77 provinces of Thailand and it's going to take a toll on the GDP as a study here by the University of Thai Chamber of Commerce has come out to say that Thailand's economic growth will fall to 3.5 to 4 percent from the previous forecast of 4 to 4.5 percent hit mainly by the serious flooding this year. The study by the private sector's think tank showed that floods in the south since April and the current flooding in the central region and the north of the country will dent the country's GDP by 0.5 to 0.7 percentage point worth 58.49 billion baht. 
The setback was attributed to the impact on the agriculture sector worth an estimated 31.5 billion baht, 11.73 billion baht to the trading sector, 8.73 billion baht loss of public property, 2.21 billion baht to housing, 1.89 billion to tourism, and 1.48 billion baht to the industrial sector. Of the estimated losses, 32.41 billion baht was due to the flooding impact from July to September, while 26.07 billion baht was from the flooding in the southern part in April to May this year. The economic stimulus measures of the government will have only a small impact on the Thai economy this year as most of the measures including salary hikes, higher labor costs and tax reductions in the first car and first house schemes will become fully effective only next year, said Thanawat Ponvishai, director of the UTCC's Economic and Business Forecasting Center. The ratings and credit cuts of several banks in the U.S. And the financial crunch in Italy's economy, which is the third largest in the EU, would continue to severely impact the global economy. The budget cuts, which will continue to be adopted in many countries in the Eurozone, would also slow growth in the global economy this year and the next, Tanawat noted. To ensure growth, he suggested that the government develop 25 watersheds to absorb water during the rainy season. The government should not cut the budget to tackle the flooding problem. Based on the survey of 1,200 respondents, the UTCC poll showed that 27% of them were affected by the flooding, about 18% were seriously affected, 18% were slightly hit, while 27% were not affected at all. Sawani Thai Rung Road, vice president of the UTCC Research Division, pointed out that almost 80% of respondents were not satisfied with the government's measures to tackle the flooding, while only about 20% said the government has worked promptly to resolve the problem.